Welcome to the Highly Anticipated Podcast. I'm your host, Josh Raphael. I got with me today, Kenny Bignarek, two-time Juco champ, Nike athletes. You guys know him. How are you doing today, Kenny? Doing good. How are you, Josh? Doing good. Doing good. So, you know, everyone, you know, they, they see your fast times. Everyone, you know, they see you running 44, 19. Everyone sees that, but nobody knows Kenny Bignarek. You know, they don't know where you came from they don't know your story so I'm kind of here today you know to kind of dive into your life a little more and kind of know more about you and my first question for you is what made you decide to start running track Uh, I started at a good age uh, in elementary and you know just did it for fun back then and you know, continue to do it every single year and every grade. And, you know, I love the competition with all the other kids, you know, even at a young age. And um, after that, you know, just getting to high school, middle school and, you know, getting to the higher level and all that stuff, you know, I began to love it more. And, you know, I just started at a young age, basically. So at what point, like at least leading up, like before college, did you feel like okay, I can, I can go somewhere with this sport? Like I'm, I'm really good at this sport. Like, at what? When did you realize that? I realized in my freshman sophomore year of high school, my coach uh, Saseda kind of pushed me to, uh, you know, go to a higher level and compete more, com- be more competitive in the sport. Because before all that, I was kind of just in it just to do it. I was good at it, and you know. I just, you know, I just did it without really a purpose or whatnot. Uh, so he pushed me to do a USATF in the summer. And my freshman year, I went to Jacksonville, uh, Florida, and I got my butt whooped. And I kind of just, you know, getting your, you know, getting slapped in the mouth and all that stuff, kind of get more of a, you know, worth that could, worth work ethic in there and kind of help me push uh, and propel my, you know, my track and field and all that stuff. Uh, so I would say my freshman and sophomore year. Got you, got you. That's when I got really serious with it. Got you. So at least, you know, leading up, you know, towards as you start progressing in high school and you start, you know, you're going to have to start making decisions on what college you're going to. And obviously I'm sure there was a point where you, you found out that you were, you were going to have to go to a junior college. And Mm -hmm. obviously you being you running as fast as you did in high school, having, you basically could have went to any junior college you wanted in the country. What made you decide to choose Indian Hills? Uh, Well, when Brent came to me, he, uh, you know, said a lot saying uh, it was a brand new, um, you know, track and field program. And, you know, they're really like two or three years old. And I like the idea of, you know, bringing a, you know, program that was kind of like low and then kind of help, helping them propel themselves. I, I yeah. feel like I did that with my high school because we weren't really known for uh, track. I mean, we were really known for basketball and football, you know, and all the other sports. Uh, so I kind of helped, you know, coming in my freshman year in high school, I kind of helped, you know, propel them and let them know that, you know, there's more, you know, more here than, you know, just track. I mean, just football and basketball. They're like, people and track and all that stuff were all good like all the sports are good at that school so I just I basically just like the idea of bringing the Indian Hills program track and field program up you know through the years yeah for sure for sure so tell me tell me a little bit about you know your 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 junior college experience would you say it really helped you you know going forward you know would you would you have any do you have any regrets or do you just appreciate every moment that you've had there? Uh, I mean, it was a bumpy ride. Had a little adversity to go through. Um, I mean, you already know with the coaching changes and all that stuff. I mean, a bunch of us, like, you're already there a year, so you already went through the system. But then I came in new and, you know, I expected, you know, something to happen, a certain thing to happen. And, you know, uh, the, the coach that recruited me left and, you know, it was kind of everything was out in the open. And we had Brent and everything was good. And then, you know, he ended up, you know, doing his own thing after a while. So 
it was kind of a bumpy ride because I wasn't expecting all that. Like, you know, there's it was a little rocky with the there was really no stability in the program and all that stuff. So, I mean, other than that, you know, we just went through it, did what we needed, did what we needed to do, and you know, continue to move forward and you know, ended up running what I needed to run. So, despite everything that happened, everything with the coaching changes, everything with the instability, all that, I just – walk me through your mentality going into JUCO Nationals, you know, knowing that you, you wanted to run 44, knowing that you wanted to run under 20 seconds. What was your mentality going into that meet because of – despite everything going on around you? Uh, just give it my all. I mean, wasn't really sure what I was going to put on the table, what, what I was going to throw down because with everything that did happen, but I did know that, you know, I, I did the best I could do, you know, with everything that happened. So, you know, just lay it all on the line and see what I could do. You, you know, just push through everything and give everything I got, you know, uh, just, you know, give everything 110% and everything. And you know, I ended up doing what I wanted to do and everything was good at the end. What did you, what did you feel when you, when you looked up at the clock and you saw 44 seconds after your 400 or, and when you looked up at the clock and you saw 19 seconds for your two, like what, what was going through your head at that time when you, when that, when you looked up and saw that? Joy, complete shock. I feel like all the emotions I didn't I, I kind of had my doubts with everything that happened in the year like I knew what I wanted to run but like we both knew you wasn't sure that you know I had everything you know everything I, I did everything like, I felt like I did everything but you know yeah. with everything that happened I still felt like you know I might have missed something yeah so there's more I could have done and all that um but you know after seeing that um you know just joy happiness uh, it was a huge confidence booster in my like I feel like I'm the one of the most talented you know sprinters out there so it was just a huge confidence booster too and you know just complete joy gotcha and kind of to backtrack a little bit you know before outdoor started so at Juco Nationals indoor obviously you were you were the favorite for the four and the two you went out there you won the four and unfortunately, in the 200, you know, you got injured in finals. So, like, for athletes out there, you know, that are going through injuries or going through a time where, you know, they're, you know, they're not sure what's going to happen next. You know, they're upset. You know, they have setbacks. What can you tell them that helps you get through that injury, being such the high-profile athlete that you are? Uh, I knew what I could do healthy. So I wasn't really nervous or scared about you know, the future. I just needed to get my body right and just be ready to roll and do what I needed to do. Uh, I mean, it wasn't good. You know, it was a downer that I had an injury in indoor nationals, but I mean, it was indoors. I already knew that indoors would have been nice, but outdoors was the, the main goal. But, you know, just keep your head up and, you know, get the body right and just do what you need to do. Like, you know, work. Gotcha. So, fast forward, you know, you get through indoor, you get through outdoor. Not many people, I mean, as far as I know, I don't know many track and field athletes that go pro right after their freshman year at a junior college. So, like, you already doing that. You're an elite company already. So, what pushed you to say that, okay, I feel like I'm ready to take this next step in my career and go professional? Uh, I felt like anywhere I went, I was going to, like, my talent-wise, I feel like I have, I'm one of the best and one of the most talented uh, track and field athletes out there. So I felt like anywhere I went, you know, it, being in you know a decent circumstance or the right circumstance uh i'll be all right and i'll do what i need to do but it really pushed me uh i mean you know during college i felt like it was a little 
I mean, I had a little bit of challenge, but I felt like, you know, I could I could have pushed myself to. I obviously I was running at a more elite level, so you know the chance to go pro was there, and I decided to take it because obviously the money, you know, find uh, and you know just be able to compete at a higher level. I like the uh, the competitive competitiveness and all that. Just basically that. Got you, got you. So obviously, when you first went pro, you know you went to the Diamond League, you ran against. Andre DeGrasse, those type of athletes, you know, um, and you wasn't, you weren't running as well as you wanted to run to start because obviously you had a long season, you were tired, you know, you went to Worlds, you didn't really run what you wanted to run. What was your mentality after that saying, like going into next year? Uh, I mean, after my injury and all that, it was just to get my body right. And I saw comments here and there that people were saying I made the wrong decision on going pro and I just wanted to prove them wrong and prove that, you know, I'm one of the best athletes out there. So I felt like this year, you know, during this whole Corona year too, it was just a comeback season for me and, and kind of to build up my confidence because I never like had it, you know, at worlds in USA, like USA's I pulled my hamstring and worlds like my hamstring was still a little bummed up. So I didn't end up running what I wanted to run. Uh, but I wanted to just prove to myself and to everybody else that, you know, I still have it, still got it. You know, I'm young and all that stuff, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to be one of those athletes that are going to be always, you know, yeah. um, contending for a, a medal. Got, so. you. got you, got you. So obviously you came into this year and, you know, you ran a world lead at one point during the season, uh, you PR'd in the hundred and, Mm -hmm. a confidence booster was that for you to go out there and still like obviously the circumstances are out of the ordinary we have the coronavirus you're not able to practice as much as you would like and to be able to come out there and run the times that you did in the one and the two how much of a confidence booster was that that was a real big confidence booster because even when my hamstring was right like deep down in my brain I was always worried about you know, something happening, you know, going a little too fast or whatnot, and then my, my body wouldn't be able to hold up. Uh, so, you know, the fact that I was able to run that fast this year during a corona year, we had to sit out a couple of weeks and a couple of days in pra you know, of not doing any practices because gyms were closed, tracks were closed, and all that stuff. So, I mean, just the fact that I ran like 19A and 1009 this year was just – to me, it was just incredible, and it was a huge confidence booster for myself. I didn't even expect myself to really run that fast in 100 because I'm not really a 100-meter sprinter, but, you know, the fact that I ran 10 on 9 I mean, just says a lot. So it was just a real huge confidence booster for me. And how how much would you say um, your training group helped you get there? I know that you're running with, I believe, Aaron Brown, Justin Gatlin. How much has – that training group helped you? They helped me out a lot. Uh, you already know from JUCO, I'm not really good at starts and all that. My starts, I'm still working on. But being with them, all of them, you know, Justin Gatlin, Aaron Brown, Mo, Maurice, Eddie, uh, they're all really good starters in 100. And that's what I need right now. So Every single time we step in the blocks, I'm getting my my butt kicked by them, and I hate it. Like, but I need it because it's gonna help me, you know, improve on that part of my race. Because I feel like, you know, the second half of my race is the best half, but I just need to, you know, fix the first half, and then you know maybe records and stuff like that will be broken. I ran 19.8, and I don't know if you saw the video, but my start was really really bad, like really bad. So it's just the first half of the race I need to fix. Okay. And training with them, they help me push. We we help each other push each other. I'm the where I'm the one there. Like we do like even now, like we're doing fall training and that's kind of my work that I like to do. Because mm -hmm. you know, I'm a four hundred meter specialist as of right now. Mm -hmm. So when they're all tired and stuff like that, I'm the one that's kind of leading the pack mm -hmm. and you know, kind of bringing them up with me. So you know, we're all just helping each other different parts of our race and stuff like that. Gotcha. How much are you looking forward to the Olympics? I know you, that's oh, yeah. a big goal of yours. I know it's a dream of yours. 
Um, and like, would you not say it's kind of a blessing in disguise that didn't happen last year because of with everything you was going through, you know? So like, are you, would you say like, you know, you're, you feel more confident going into the Olympics this year? Well, the yeah, I'm a, one. yeah, I'm a lot more confident now. Like I said before, just last year felt like it, I wasn't really ready. I mean, I could have been, but I wasn't sure because I wasn't sure what my body was going to be able to handle, you know, how my hamstring was going to hold up. So the fact that Corona happened, it was a blessing in disguise. It gave me more time to heal up and, you know, bring, build up more, more confidence in myself. So um, the fact that, you know, all that happened was just a blessing in disguise. And I'm, I'm really excited for this year because after running 19.8 and 10.09, like in a Corona year, it just makes me wonder like what I'm going to be able to do this year when we have access to everything that we need to do you know, starting training and all that stuff at the right time, no distractions, no, like, you know, there's no distractions. And I, you know, we'll see what I, what I do this year at the Olympics. I mean, I expect myself to be there. I am um, the only chance I feel like I'm not going to be able to make the team is if I get hurt. I like the confidence. So before I let you go, you know, I'm going to ask you, you know, for all the track athletes asking that are aspiring to one day, you know, be you that are aspiring to one day be able to run professional. What, what would you, what advice would you give them? I uh, just tell them to uh, just listen to their coaches and keep grinding. If they're in a spot where, you know, they're injured or just not running fast, you know, just have faith, uh, get your body right and just keep grinding. I only look forward and take, take a step forward. Gotcha. Well, if you guys came to watch the podcast today, I want to say thank you. Um, show me some love. Um, show Kenny some love. Kenny, thank you for joining the podcast. I really no problem, Josh. Um, obviously, we're all going to be watching you this year, cheering you on, and wishing you the best. I'm sure you're going to have an amazing year. All yeah. right. Thanks. Everyone else, like I said before, that's watching. Thank you for tuning in. I'm out.